Welcome to episode 40 of the SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is May 7th, and together with Goran and Robert, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hello. Today, we are happy to welcome Martin Reppler again with us. A few weeks back, he has published um, part four of his principal propagation blog post. His Earlier posts were already um, viewed by a lot of participants, and there, there are 5,000 views and stuff like that. And I'm sure his latest blog will be similar popular. But before we go there, let's, as always, quickly take a look at this week. So I think one thing that I um, want to highlight, and that was just uh, released yesterday, is that um, Microsoft or Brad Smith announced um, that there will be uh, a new setup that allows to really store and process data in the European Union. Um, so obviously, you, you know, Azure is, is global and um, there there were already a lot of um, commitments and um, things in place that we really defend our customer data. I think we, we talked about this some time ago and that we really are committed to comply to GDPR and other requirements, but now um, we are really working on um, having a, yeah, a closed EU-only cloud, so to say, which I thought, thought which I thought was was really really interesting. That Microsoft is really taking this extremely serious. And there's a there's a nice blog post here um, that that outlines all the the things that that we're working on. I mean, this is a work in progress, obviously, so this is not yet available. Um, but this is something that that SAP is really sorry that Microsoft is taking um, really, really serious. And while reading this blog, what I also found really interesting, I mean, again, we, we have talked about this um, sometimes that um, Microsoft that we have released another data center, another region somewhere in the world. But actually, I, I wasn't aware that um, here in the meantime, in the EU, EU alone, we have regions in or data centers in Austria, Denmark, France, Germany, Greece, it, uh, Ireland, Italy. So, so even today, we already have so many data centers um, in Europe alone, which I think really shows this this commitment to to stay local, to to be close to the customers. So I thought that was I, I somehow had had lost um, this this overview that that we really have so many um, data centers already. Um, running uh, in, in, in Europe. So that was a little surprising or a nice refresher for me, I would say. Um, the other thing or a related thing, obviously, um, again, we, we have talked about this. We had a lot of um, uh, sessions with Ralf Klar and some other colleagues already about Azure NetApp files. So I think um, when it comes to um, HANA scale out scenarios, um, Azure NetApp files obviously plays a very important role. Ralf had shown us some some other um, great use cases how to optimize the setup of Azure NetApp files. But obviously, with Azure NetApp files, you also need to make sure that Azure NetApp files is actually available in the region um, that you're interested in. And um, here on the mm -hmm. NetApp um, web page, there, there's a nice overview of the regions where actually Azure NetApp files is already available. And I think obviously here in Europe, we have a very good presence in, in the US, in Asia Pacific. So I think um, it's it's really nice to see how, um, <clears throat> yeah, how, how global already the Azure NetApp files presence is. Um, Coming to the next thing, obviously, when you when you want to deploy an SAP system, there there are multiple ways how you can do this. Um, you can do it on your own, doing everything really step by step. You can use the cloud appliance library for for demo systems and 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 stuff like that. But if you want to deploy productive environments and you, if you want to automate these, then very often we see that customers are using Terraform scripts that are using Ansible um, to create their own scripts to to get started and. Um, here on on GitHub on Azure slash SAP dash HANA, um, there's a really nice um, GitHub repo that, yeah, evolved over a lot of months and and years, and uh, they they released a, a yeah an update again um, on how to can how you can really deploy a full working SAP system using the provided Terraform and Ansible scripts. It's a very detailed. 
um, documentation. It, it has a, a lot of fantastic concepts. I mean, following obviously the best practices that we have, the reference architectures that we have in this um, in this context, and it it really guides you. There, there's a nice um, here getting started guide, and um, that allows you to really follow this step by step. What things do you need to do? So um, what credentials do you need to provide? Where do you need to put the SAP <coughs> software and stuff like that? And then you can just run through this and deploy uh, your SAP system on Azure. So I think it's really a very extensive and a very um, broad and powerful set of scripts that are provided here by, by Microsoft. And many more to come. So I hope we'll get Kimo here on the episode, I hope. <laughs> yeah, it would be interesting, really. Yeah, absolutely, promising. absolutely. So Kimo is one of the uh, main contributors yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That would be that would be really nice. Good, then um, last week we already quickly talked about um, the uh, projects in, in an Azure DevOps, um, in, in a, the Azure DevOps demo generator, I think, um, is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And now there's also a nice um, blog post um, related to this. Ah, here, there, it's this Azure DevOps generator. So last week we only showed uh, the the actual tool without going into details. But Goran, you you found this this blog post here. Yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, um, with the Azure DevOps, you can uh, also use it to track your project, of course, I mean, development DevOps project, but also in general as a project, you know, who is supposed to do what and who, which are the people assigned to a task and when the task is finished. So it's an interesting here work basically to create uh, the template for the SAP migration project, right? What, what you need to reflect it, right? right? So people can and use basically here uh, Azure DevOps as a kind of even project management mm -hmm. tool, so to say, yeah. So people could try it, of course, extend it, yeah. So it's it's nice, nice, I would say, um, yeah. Maybe yeah. a uh, way to also track the project as well, not just in Excel or those kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, I think, um, I mean, last week we we learned all about the um, cloud adoption framework <laughs> and uh, the. Uh, the, the, the documentation of what you need to consider to implement an SAP system, to migrate the SAP system to Azure. And I think here with DevOps, that, that's certainly one option where you can track all the required steps and and and, um, and uh, yeah, uh, steps to, that you have done already to migrate your SAP system. So yeah. I think that's definitely interesting. Um, one last thing here, um, is about um, the business technology platform. Um, obviously, especially in the context of RISE with SAP, there, there is a, a, an additional focus on the BTP, uh, what you can do with this, and <clears throat> SAP is having um, some webinars. Um, I actually think that they, they have quite a lot of webinars currently going on to really engage with the community to uh, talk about uh, yeah, new technologies. And there's now a new series um, of webinars here from, from SAP around the BTP, um, starting with here the integration suite and extension suite. And um, I think actually down here, yeah, um, you can register for the first session here in, in May, um, which will focus around the integration suite here with Harsh, Udo, and Piyush. So I think if, if you are interested in um, extension scenarios, integration scenarios, um, where, where, I, where I definitely think that the BTP has a lot of very interesting and useful um, templates and scenarios. I think these these webinars might be um, also interesting for you. Good. So with this, um, I'm done for 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 this week. I would say with the news from this week, and I um, obviously want to uh, now hand over to to Martin. Um, again, he he was on the show. Uh, a few weeks back um, to talk about the principal propagation series. And I'm really <clears throat> super excited to have him back um, because I think this this whole single sign on topic, um, I mean, when we bridge the world from Microsoft, from Teams um, to SAP is something that is really crucial. So um, Martin, I'm, I'm happy that you're back here. 
Um, still, maybe you can quickly introduce yourself, and then I'm I'm looking forward to the demo and the scenario that you have prepared. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Holger and uh, Goran and Robert, uh, for yeah having me again here on the show. Um, yeah. Let me maybe start sharing my screen, and while doing so, um, yeah, let me quickly introduce myself. So. Um, Martin Repple, I'm uh, at, SA, uh, at Microsoft uh, responsible as a cloud solution architect for um, SAP. So I'm taking care for SAP as our customer uh, whenever they have questions regarding uh, their usage and um, consumption of Azure um, services. Um, not only me, but a, a full team. Uh, is taking care for them here. And um, in that role, I actually also look into integration scenarios, such as the one um, that uh, Holger just uh, quickly introduced. Um, so um, I have a little bit of a background um, <laughs> for quite some time in the area of security. And that's why probably I'm also looking closer on uh, in those um, in, into those scenarios. And um, if I remember on the last episode uh, 31, uh, where I initially um, presented that scenario, um, um, I would like to do a quick recap from that session um, so that we are all on the same page um, and want to, yeah, and, and today I actually want to give you an idea how to implement the same scenario in uh, with different architectural components um, in such an end-to-end -end integration scenario. Um, and that actually is mainly driven um, by a number of customers, of joint customers, joint SAP and Microsoft customers um, who are actively yeah, who are asking um, us about um, this um, yeah, um, alternative approach to such a scenario. So let me um, quickly go into the presentation before we jump to the actual demo. Um, so um, it's, oh, I just need to switch my screen so i hope you can see now the presentation yep. great um yeah so i phrased the the title of today's session um, part two because we had part one in episode 31 um where we uh, looked at this uh, principal propagation scenario um, already but uh, today i want to make uh, i want to um, show you how the same scenario presented in episode uh, 31 can be implemented using um, power platform and how to integrate power platform with sap solution in the cloud and on premise um so that said um let's do a quick recap from uh, the previous podcast um, you may remember that uh, what we try to achieve is um, from a from an end user's perspective is uh, shown here on the slide. So um, I as an as a user log in um, into my team's um, desktop client. Um, I am typically signed in already to my um, local computer, so I'm or to the domain and uh, to Azure AD and um, I'm when I launch um, um, teams, um, I already, I'm, I'm logged in and um, the idea of, um, of this scenario is that I can uh, type in a question that um, to chat with a, with a chatbot um, and I as an yeah, employee of a, of, a, of a company want to look up um, product um, or equipment data from a catalog um, um, because I'm interested in, for example, buying a new laptop for my, for my workplace. So, um, and the idea is that, um, or this, the, the requirement is that this data of this of these of this product catalog resists, uh, resides in a uh, backend system um, in an SAP backend system. Yeah? So, in other words, the chatbot um, needs to look up that data from that product catalog in SAP. Um, and the only thing I should provide is maybe an um, is an is a name of the product, yeah. So, um, but any additional data such as the price of the product, the category it belongs to, etc., that's all stored and managed in an SAP backend system. So, um, I as an as an employee may only have um, the permissions or authorizations to buy certain products or products um, that belong to certain categories. So, for example, I may not be allowed 
to buy uh, flat screens or headsets, but only notebooks. Yeah, so I can further authorize the end users in the backend system to only allow users to buy products from certain categories, and that's what's happening here in in this in this yeah overview slide. So I, as an end user or employee, I'm logged in into Teams. I start chatting with the bot. The bot confirms that I'm already single signed on into Teams. So the bot asks me about the product that I am looking for. I'm entering just the identifier of that um, or a name of that product. And then without any further um, prompting of, of, of any credentials, um, yeah, in this case, those, two, for example, that my user may have um, in the backend system, the, the bot returns with the data um, uh, that uh, for the product that I have searched for. Yeah. So um, what happens here is that um, the authenticated user in Teams is taken essentially all the way to the backend system in order to query that data for that locked in user. And this is what is on the SAP side called principle propagation. So the principle, the authenticated user is securely propagated through, in this case, even across clouds and uh, all the way to the backend system um, that typically resides behind highly secured firewall boundaries yeah, to query the data for that locked in user um, and to apply all the authorizations given to the user in the backend system. Um, so we are not querying that data with an almighty technical user here, but really under the or on behalf of the locked in user in Teams yeah, without prompting the user again for any credentials in the backend system. Cool. That's and that's really awesome. I mean, just because SAP system will always be somewhere hidden in the background yeah. behind the thousands of firewalls. Exactly. Nobody would just open yeah. for you something, right? Yeah. So right, uh, go on. actually there, there are two challenges to solve. The, the first one is exactly the one you, you just mentioned. Like we need to, um, first of all, we need to ensure a network connectivity. I mean, we are doing a, a, a live uh, request here. So we uh, at the point in time where we enter the product name here. So we want to uh, retrieve the data from the backend system. So there's nothing cached in the cloud or the like. Yeah. And second is we um, need to ensure that the authenticated user is securely propagated um, all the way to the um, to the backend system yeah, from the initial authentication in Azure AD. So that said, um, um, that was essentially the, the 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 flow that we looked at in the last episode. So we implemented that bot using the bot framework. So we chose a a pro code approach here. So um, the developer of the of the of the bot um, actually needs to understand uh, yeah, C sharp and and the and the SDK for building the bot. Um, and um, the user logged in um, via um, yeah, Azure AD. The, um, the, the bot will request from uh, Teams so that the bot runs inside Teams, inside the desktop. Um, it requests an access token from Azure AD for the bot and returns that to the bot service running on Azure. Um, now, equipped with this access token issued to the user in our picture here, John Doe, the the bot can request a um, or can exchange that access token um, into a SAML assertion using an, um, a provided endpoint by Azure AD. Um, so we are exchanging just tokens here, but the reason for doing so is that only with an, with, with a, with, after this exchange and after the bot obtained this SAML assertion, um, the SAML assertion, uh, so SAML stands for the Security Assertion Markup Language, so uh, also well-known and widely adopted standard across SAP, Microsoft, and many other vendors. That SAML assertion can be sent and is understood on the SAP side to issue a token from SAP to use that access token, an OAuth access token, finally, in this step number six, to call an endpoint on the SAP side, in our previous um, episode, we used SAP Cloud Platform, or now rebranded to uh, SAP Business Technology Platform, and the process integration runtime from the extension uh, from the integration suite to uh, make that call to an endpoint exposed um, by by process integration. That finally then did the the last mile to the um, SAP system or actually first to the SAP Cloud Connector deployed in the customer's on-premise uh, network or corporate network 
to um, to uh, use the cloud connector finally to make the call to the SAP system, which exposes the service for that product catalog as an OData service using a CDS view. So that in very brief uh, steps and, and, and um, uh, overview here um, was our scenario in the in the last episode. So now all of that. OK, this is again quickly in, in, from a standards perspective. Um, so the, the we, we rely here since we are bridging here um, or since we are uh, um, calling uh, across different clouds here, so um, SAP or different technologies, SAP and Microsoft. We rely on, com on on interoperable standards here, and the one that I mentioned, so the this exchange of an of an access of an OAuth access token into a SAML assertion, and using that SAML assertion to request an access token from an um, OAuth service, that's um, perfectly um, standardized and described in the um, by an IIT, IIT FRC. Um, so if you want to learn more, just click on that link um, or search for that RFC 7522. Now, customers asked us in the past um, if we want to implement the bot not using this pro code approach, so using the bot framework um, and the SDK, but instead want to use, we want to use Power Platform and uh, specifically Power Virtual Agents, um, which um, gives you a, a low-code environment for implementing a chatbot. How would such a scenario look like using those technologies? And we have quite a number of customers who really love Power Platform and like to like the way how you um, can design a and implement um, your 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 business logic using Power Automate uh, to using the the, the um, as a, as a tool for building automation flows and business logic and uh, Power Virtual Agents to 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 design the the conversational UI and flow of for example of a chatbot. Um, so we took this question and asked ourselves, so how how would this, uh, a solution look um, in such a scenario? And um, the following picture now shows what we the underlying architecture of the demo for today's episode. So essentially on the on the left hand side, nothing really changes dramatically. So we have um, so so we still have Azure AD being the the the, the central identity um, um, and access management system um, uh, on the Microsoft side, certainly. So we have a user who is using the chatbot um, running again in Teams, um, but this time implemented not using the SDK, but um, uh, with using Power Virtual Agents. Um, and the user authenticates initially against um, Azure Active Directory, so all the same as we had it in the, in the previous uh, scenario. Um, now the the business logic or the the logic for for exchanging the the access token um, is now um, in this scenario now implemented um, using a uh, power automate flow, and finally the actual call made to the SAP system is also implemented um, using a second uh, power automate flow. Those two flows are shown in the picture here with um, so the exchange token flow. And this second flow, the call or data, uh, SAP or data flow, those are um, uh, invoked by the um, uh, by the um, agent um, or by the yeah, by the chatbot implemented um, using Power Virtual Agents. So um, essentially, the, um, the the token exchange um, from the access token issued by Azure AD to a SAML assertion. Uh, needed for requesting the access token from SAP. That's all done in this exchange token flow. And after obtaining the access token from SAP, um, the access token is handed over to the second flow, which then uses that access token issued by uh, SAP to make the call to SAP Gateway. Now, another um, significant change compared to the previous architecture is that we have also replaced in this solution the um, SAP Cloud Connector with the Azure On-Premises Data Gateway. So for those who don't know what On-Premises Data Gateway is, you can think of it as, as, a, as, a, as an appliance that allows you to build a secure tunnel connection between your on-premise um, network and or your corporate network and, um, and the cloud. So, um, in that sense, it serves a very similar purpose 
as the SAP Cloud Connector. Um, I have to say that the SAP Cloud Connector um, has, let's say, a little bit more of, of, of features and functionality incorporated in that in that uh, tool. But for the purpose of our secure connectivity here, the on-premises data gateway uh, perfectly also serves here as the um, yeah as a secure gateway to establish such a encrypted secure tunnel to allow that secure connectivity from the cloud to the on-premise um, world. Yeah. So what would, is it 443 port outside just being used or something else? Yeah. Yes, okay. exactly. so we could, so um, I will show that now in, in, in the demo. So what is needed is you, you need to create a so-called connection um, in, uh, in the power platform, which uh, refers to um, an instance of the on-premise data gateway that needs to be registered beforehand. And once you do so, um, you can refer to the uh, to that gateway instance um, in a so-called connection that you create. It's an entity in power platform. Um, and that connection is then used in the steps um, that the um, the power automate flows uh, can use to make calls. Yeah. Exactly. So this is, 443, it's HTTPS, yeah. secure one, outside mm -hmm. connection, which basically it's for every company is always opened, right? Yeah. Um, well, the, the, the trick here is that, and that again, that's basically the same approach as the SAP Cloud Connector does. So when you when you when you establish that secure tunnel, it doesn't require that your corporate firewall administrator um, um, uh, drills any holes from the outside in your corporate firewall. Yeah, so the connection is actually established from the inside to the outside, like with any, let's say, yeah, um, uh, common um, um, internet uh, outbound browser. Yeah. Browser. Yeah. yeah, I mean, every browser on the corporate network does the same in that sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but what is what what is established here, and that's why we phrase it here as a tunnel, is that this connection can be used in bidirectional. Yeah, so you can define and and and, and you define definitely only certain connections that that are allowed to use that tunnel, and um, and then you you have a bidirectional communication. Maybe one thing to mention is that um, what on-premises data gateway does not support compared or does not provide compared to the SAP Cloud Connector is, if you remember, and maybe then you have to, to, to look back in episode 31, SAP Cloud Connector helped us on the last mile to, to, to to propagate the, the the AD authenticated user by generating so-called short-lived X509 client certificates. Yeah. And it does so for a good purpose because um, uh, many customers may still rely on X509 client certificate authentication and may not have um, the possibility to, uh, to authenticate and authorize the caller using an access token, an OAuth access token. Yeah? So for that reason, the SAP Cloud Connector supports such a, yeah, um, su such a on the fly generation of these short lived certificates. And that's um, and that, and but this is a functionality or feature that on our Azure on premises data gateway has not incorporated. And for that reason, we do rec or we request in in this proposal here or in this architecture um, solution what we we request an access token directly from the SAP gateway system. Um, in the back end, yeah, and um, um, in in the previous um, um, approach um, with the um, with uh, BTP in place, yeah, with the uh, business technology platform, we requested the the access token from the from BTP, yeah, and then use the the principal propagation in Cloud Connector to generate the these X509 certificates um, on the last mile to the SAP backend system, yeah. So that's also kind of a significant change here to that to that architecture. Yeah, but um, on the other side, I have to say, like maybe with this, with such an approach that comes with few limitations, definitely, yeah, um, the setup looks a little bit leaner, let's say, yeah, um, compared to the um, to the user. But um, I mean, it's it's definitely in the end an, a, um, um, a decision made by. By, by the scenario owner, for example, if you rely on certain um, uh, services in, in BTP, uh, then definitely um, BTP is back to the picture. And then you can yeah, rely on our work from episode 31, <laughs> where we also demonstrated that integration, that it works. Um, but for example, if you do not rely on a service in BTP, 
and you are fine with um, integrating the chatbot running in Teams um, by just pulling data as it is, maybe yeah, from an uh, from an uh, gateway service, yeah, without further integration logic that may be implemented in the, with the integration suite in um, in BTP, then this solution might also work for you. you know? So it's not necessarily that the I, one is better than the other. But it really depends on the customer scenario. I think we have seen yep. both scenarios already. We have seen some customers that are clearly saying, well, I, I already have BTP in place. I am already using authentication services on, on the BTP. So I definitely want to go this way. And then there are other customers that are uh, not using the BTP or, or for, for completely different scenarios and and then obviously this scenario works and i think the, the beauty is that we have these different options now and and we yes. you you really prove that both of them are working and yeah. so so i think that that's really the the important message definitely yeah so simply you have the choice yeah so and 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 yeah as you said Holger, the good news is you have the choice yeah you are not bound to a certain setup and technology and and have to use it yeah um but um yeah so I think then we are ready to jump into the demo. Yes. So let's see that. Let's see that uh, flow um, live and on stage. Um, so I will um, start um, on the top here. So I will log into um, the Power Virtual Agents um, uh, design time, uh, which is a browser-based um, environment, um, and we will invoke that 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 chatbot um, using the the web. So there's a there's a, um, a web uh, a client um, that allows us to test our chatbot, um, and we make use of that in the first run. See how the flows uh, um, invoke um, and and get the tokens here um, from Azure AD as well as finally from the SAP system. Um, and uh, then we will see that um, the um, that the results um, returned for that for the logged in user um, did not respond with the yeah uh, with all the data needed. So then we need to change the authorizations of the user in the backend and then we will do the same test again from within a, a Microsoft Teams desktop client um, and see whether or not the results change based on the end users authorizations that we changed here in the backend system yeah which in the end proves that the user successfully really was propagated end to end yeah and not uh, and we didn't use um, somewhere in between uh, silently without anyone telling a almighty technical user <laughs> okay so let me go to my browser um, yeah, maybe as I said, let's start in the design time of Power Virtual Agents. So for those who are not that familiar with Power Virtual Agents, it's a yeah, it's a it's a graphical low code tool set that allows me to define um, or to 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 model the conversational um, UI using a chatbot um, in this nice canvas view here. So as you can see, all the steps of my bot are um, yeah um, designed here so um, it usually starts by defining um, some so-called trigger phrases such as and, and those should be related certainly to the scenario or to the to the to the business process that the bot um, is supporting so here i've yeah entered some phrases such as search for a product search the product catalog need an additional monitor purchase a new notebook so if one of these um, uh, elements in these trigger phrases are, are entered by the user in the chatbot for example running in teams um, that chatbot will start uh, working and getting into a conversational yeah, uh, discussion with you <laughs> um, and um, the first step as you can see here is an is an authentication yeah um, so um, and the the, the 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 nice thing is that when we run that bot later in teams you will see that this authentication step actually is skipped because it detects that the user is already authenticated in teams so uh, power virtual agents supports so, so to say team single sign-on integration so if you run that bot from within teams um, that step immediately is is um, is uh, uh, is executed and um, returns a successful condition which means that um, um, uh, the bot knows who you are um, and it knows so by 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 having access uh, to that access token um, that is issued to the bot and um, that access token gives 
the the bot, um, yeah, um, the, in all the information needed, such as the user ID, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and um, then we later on go into the conversation with the user. So we, um, the bot will ask the user um, what product um, the user is looking for. So you enter the the ID of a product, which is then available here as an so-called yeah variable here um, in that in the in the follow-on steps of that flow to uh, pass that um, input of the user um, along with the um, um, with the access token um, obtained from this authentication step um, before to our power automate flow so we first invoke this exchange token flow which uh, takes the access token issued to the bot um, uh, that is issued well issued for the bot, but to the user, to the end user, to the authenticated end user, um, it it exchanges that to the SAML assertion, and then send that SAML assertion to SAP to finally obtain the SAP issued access token. So that's the result out of this step. So we have an SAP token here, which is then finally used in the second Power Automate um, flow invocation here to call the SAP O data service. Yeah? And then we hopefully get a result. So let's trigger our bot. Um, and as you can see from above, from these phrases, I have just for, for testing purposes, I also added test here. So I can simply enter here test in my in my uh, web client. So that's the web client for, for, for testing a bot. Um, in that web client, that web client, um, I'm not authenticated here yet. So this is why I'm prompted by this authentication step. And the nice thing, by the way, is that this flow here even goes um, or will um, illustrate the, 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 the steps where I'm currently in. So we will see after logging in um, that uh, the, the colors will change in that canvas flow. So I'm logging in as my end user or the, the employee who wants to buy a new product. So I've success, successfully authenticated and now need to provide that code back to the bot. So the bot now, oh, okay, once again. Okay, so now I have obtained an access token for that user. And as you can see, the, the flow here nicely animated here. So I'm, I'm, I'm now at this step where the, where the bot has um, uh, authenticated the user and now asked me for the product that I'm looking for. So I know that um, the notebook that I'm looking for and that I want to buy for my workplace has the ID HT1000 in the catalog, but I'm not sure about the price of the of the notebook, and I want to check if that price fits my budget. So I'm entering just the ID of that product. And now what happens is that the the, the bot will now um, yeah invoke that token exchange flow. Um, it will then look up the product in the um, in the in the catalog, but obviously the um, the last call in, in our uh, flow, the, the call to the SAP to look up that product, results with no, uh, yeah, with an empty um, list. So it's the, the bot tells me that there are no products found for HD1000 in the catalog, and I'm uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm requested here to ask the the SAP team to maybe check my permissions. So that's a very good hint <laughs> because it might be the reason why I don't see any results for for notebooks. Um, obviously, because I have I as an end user John Doe have no permissions to buy notebooks at the moment. So let's see if we can fix that. Um, but before doing so, maybe we can have a quick look into the uh, more detailed look into the code as i said it's really low code so let's first look into the exchange token flow so that was the first invocation um, and um, let's see what happened here um, so we can see a run history here, and obviously the call was su successful so the last call which is just a minute ago uh, let's see in the um, uh, what has happened here um, and we can and now we see uh, yeah, um, the, the, the steps defined in that power automate flow. Um, so it takes the input input from the from the chatbot in power virtual agents. So essentially the, the token obtained from Azure AD, the access token, uh, that's the one here. Then it um, exchanges that access token 
um, into a SAML assertion using, um, again, Azure AD um, endpoint. Um, and what it gets back from Azure AD is the response shown here in the body. And this element here, the access token, that is our SAML assertion that we need um, in order to ask SAP for an access token um, that we can use later on in the OData um, invocation. So we now pass that result and then hand over that SAML assertion um, to the token endpoint um, of the SAP gateway system. Yeah, And here what we use is like we, we use a connection um, that um, that we defined um, via the um, on-premises data gateway. So we use that. Um, let me maybe go into the into the connection details here. Um, so we use that uh, to um, to to get uh, connected to the SAP backend system via the on-premises data gateway, and um, and reach the this token endpoint that is requested here in the flow. Um, Take so second to load, right? Um, so as you can see, that connection here um, is is using my gateway instance, which is by the way running here on premise on my system as well. Yeah. So this is the best run corp gateway. Yeah, that's the one that is registered here within my environment, within my Power Automate environment, and we are making use of a connection here that um, that uses that. Um, um, yeah, that that data gateway. So uh, going back here, um, we get back the response from the um, SAP uh, backend system. That's the access token that we use in the next Power Automate flow. So that's now the access token from SAP um, with a certain scope that only allows us to call the product view CDS um, service in the backend system. It has a, it has a lifetime like one hour, so it can't be used longer than that. And with that, we get back to our um, chatbot, and the chatbot then hands over that token to the second flow we call, and that actually then makes use of that access token in um, in the in an HTTP header. And maybe let's also quickly look at that. So again, we use we check the latest uh, invocation of the flow, and see that. Um, that also ran successfully, even though we didn't get any data back again, which I think is just a result of the authorizations given to the end user. So that's the actual um, um, invocation of the of the um, backend service. And as you can see, uh, we pass that token from the previous flow that is returned here as a header, as an authorization header using the bearer scheme, and uh, then this access token issued by SAP by the gateway system, which allows us to finally call that um, OData service in the backend system. And as we can see, no results. Let's check if we can change that. So we need to go now into our Backend system. Uh, I'm already logged into my SAP system where this product data catalog resides. Yeah, and then um, let's see if we can change the authorizations to the user. So I know that my user John Doe has the product search role assigned. Um, so let's change that, or let's see how the authorizations of this role in the backend system look like. Um, let's go to the Berechtigungsdaten. Um, I should have switched to English anyway. So what we can see here is that this role has assigned a few um, authorization objects, um, one of them being the SEPMPD authorization object. That looks promising because it uh, it gives us the auth authorizations to the to search for certain categories in the product catalog, um, the authorization field of this authorization object that we need to take a closer look at is the PD category. And as we can see, obviously in that role, that product search role given to my user only allows the user to search for headsets. Now that's so therefore it's not a surprise that we don't see the result from the our previous search. So maybe let's change that and um, select instead of headsets notebooks from the category list. Mm. So going down, we see notebooks. Let's save that. 
and again, save that. Save the changes, uh, also regenerate the profiles. And now with this change, let's see if we get a different result. So um, this time I'm invoking the bot from uh, the Teams desktop, so no longer from this web chat client, um, but now from Teams. So I'm logged into a virtual machine uh, that has Teams installed. And um, I'm already, as you can see, I'm already logged in here in Teams as this user John Doe. So if I now trigger the bot using again this trigger phase, yeah, and to, to keep it simple, just test, yeah, um, the bot will no longer ask me to log in. But as you can see, it immediately uses this Teams-based single sign-on for chatbots to uh, tell me, well, I detected that you are already logged in. It welcomes me with the message and again immediately shows me the access token issued to the bot um, for my user. And I can now again um, uh, yeah, answer that question from the bot, which product are you looking for? Again, let's search for the notebook HT1000. And let's see if something changes this time. Okay, so as you can see, we can obviously now order <laughs> a notebook, or at least there was a response now this time uh, due to the fact that we changed the, the same user's authorizations in the back end. So now we get an idea about how uh, costly that new notebook will be and the user can decide whether or not he wants to order it. Yeah, so, so that's the... That's actually the end of my of my demo, um, and yeah, so perfect. Then back to you, uh, Olga. Thank you, Martin. Uh, one, one quick comment. Um, so obviously, the the token that we see here in the yeah. in the chat. I mean, this is just for your visualization, right? I mean, yes. this is not something that is required in oh, a no. productive implementation. You would definitely not do this, but it's just a good exactly. visualization that you see. Yeah, okay, now I have that's you just need to remember it for the next time. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you need to remember each and every character. No, absolutely right. Yeah, it's just it's just for me actually for 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 you know for visualization and maybe even also for testing purposes. Yeah, yeah. I mean you could you could for example like take this like copy it like if you wanna if you're interested in in the content of this of this access token. Yeah, I mean there are great tools. That allow you to um, like to 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 look into um, the content of such a of such a token. Like if you use a tool like um, that's AKMS slash JWT, um, and that uh, gives you a nice way to uh, copy paste the value of such a token. Mm -hmm. And as you can see here, so it then prints out the actual. So this is base sixty four encoded. Yeah. And then you can see like, okay, so this uh, this token has been issued. That's this little element here, the issuer, the ISS, yeah, by Azure, by your Azure AD tenant. It's issued to my user, that's important, John Doe, yeah. And even more important is the unique name uh, in this token because this is actually also the name finally that is also mapped in my backend system, yeah. So if I go all the way back to my to the to the SAP system, yeah, and look for my user in the backend system, um, um, then this user has exactly that. So that user John Doe that is known to the backend user under this alias, but this user actually has an email address set to um, yeah to exact this email address that we just saw in the Azure AD issued access token, yeah. So, and that's in in my scenario used to map the users, yeah. That's um, also yeah. quite an important piece to um, consider in such a scenario, yeah. Then I have one other question. You, you highlighted a few times that you're using the Teams client, mm -hmm. but I, I think this would also work if I run Teams in a web browser, right? Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No matter if it's the web, uh, the, the the desktop client or the yes. the, the web uh, client, definitely. Or yeah, the yeah. mobile client. Cool. I haven't tested that, but I think it should. should hopefully, it shouldn't make work. a difference. No, no, no. Should shouldn't make, make a difference. difference. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> Great. I think that's a that's again a really really nice scenario, and maybe what what you haven't shown, but the blog post that you have. Um, oh yeah, sure. It's yeah. really detailed. And again, it has all the steps outlined to 
basically create the very same scenario that uh, that you just showed us. So yeah, absolutely, exactly. Yeah. So the, so the question is yeah. where you need more time: writing blog or writing code? <laughs> <laughs> because it's no code. You know, it's no yeah, code. Yeah, this for, for for this last part, uh, Robert. Uh, actually, the there was more time spent on the blog than because it was so easy to. Um, to uh, yeah, to design that that conversational UI and and also the power automate flows. I mean, it's really I have to say. I mean, it, for me, it was actually uh, the first time I got let's say more intensively involved with with Power Platform and and the tooling. Yeah, but I really have to say, like, it was a pleasure to work with this. Yeah, so it's it's really nice. Yeah, so um, um, also the, the 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 troubleshooting. Yeah, and the and the debugging. Yeah, with this uh, tool set is really cool. Yeah, so. Um, yeah, makes a lot of fun. Yeah, um, so there was a purpose behind the question. You know, what is easier <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to show how easy it is to use the power platform? Yeah, it is marketing, yeah. marketing. Yeah, yeah. But there is some truth there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great, good, great, nice. great. No, thank you, Martin. I think that was a really good overview again. So I think we can expect you then in 10 other episodes or something like that <laughs> when you're oh, next. Yeah. Local. Well, actually, what, what, I, what I plan to do is maybe um, as a part five, the idea is to also just uh, provide some hints, tips and tricks for troubleshooting and such. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. as we know, and as we also, I think, said on the last episode, um, uh, like it's always a little bit, if, if you are stuck, then you ask yourself, OK, so where can I find the root cause? So why, for example, a token is is not accepted by one side or the other or this and that yeah so as you can saw also from this flow there's a lot of you know security stuff uh, um, required in terms of configuration and setup so it's easy to make here and there maybe a mistake and so troubleshooting i think is also important unfortunately it is yeah so um that's why i think maybe a blog post another one on troubleshooting yeah. no, maybe. I think that would be really helpful good. Yeah. i mean yeah. i I'm still very thankful, Martin, for the help you gave me when, when I reproduced the, this scenario, when I got it working on my side. And you know, I had some configurations issues on the, on the SAP side. So it was really good to help have your support there. And if you have a blog post about troubleshooting, yeah. I think that would certainly help a lot of people it's, as it's, well. It's, yeah, it happened to me as well. And, and, and I think out of these, these learnings, I think it makes yeah. sense to also share that yeah. in the broader community. Yeah. So we'll work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Good. All right. Okay. Then I think we're done for today. Thank you very much for joining and talk to you next week again. Thank you, guys. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.